For nearly 200 years, scholars of very different disciplines have asked themselves what distinguished Europe from other cultures. How can it be uh, explained that Europe became the leading globally dominant expensive culture and civilization up until the early 20th century when the Americans took over? The decisive answer is Europe's specific political, technological, and scientific dynamic is the consequence of productive tensions. Europe has always been a continent of extremely great elementary differences. But aren't we all familiar with statements claiming that Europe is dominated by something like a common Christian culture, that Europe embodies the Christliche Abendland, Christian Occident, and so on? This has been repeatedly brought up by different uh, religious actors, by the Pope, for example, in the controversy about a possible preamble of the Constitutional Treaty, which, as you all know, failed in the end. Not least the permanent controversies on the question of Turkey's accession to the European Union has often relied on arguments claiming that Turkey, as a dominant Muslim country, does not belong to Europe due to its entirely different religious culture and moral traditions. But it's important to see there is neither one Christianity nor the European Christian tradition. Christianity is a very plural word, and it would be prudent to speak of different Christianities and also of diverse European Christianities. First and foremost, of course, we must take note of the really elementary schism of Latin or Western Christianity on the one hand side and the Orthodox Christianities in Europe's East and Southeast. Many among us Western intellectuals are not well acquainted with the Eastern Orthodox Christian creeds. For most of us, they represent a very distant and mysterious religious culture. The theological and religious differences between Orthodoxy and the various Latin Christianities run very, very deep. They are of truly fundamental nature and can hardly be summed up in a concise theological or even sociological hypothesis. It seems evident that the Orthodox churches usually perceive themselves as Volkskirchen, people's churches, with a very strong nationalist bearing. They are forms of Christianity that display extremely authoritarian symbolic systems in their theological concepts. We need only think of the idea of God as Pantocrator, the Pantocrator. The ideal relationship between state and church is seen in the concept of symphonia, whereby they act in concert as the two fundamental pillars of public order that are to keep society in check. The different Orthodox Christianities are churches without homegrown traditions of enlightenment. Modern views, modern liberal views on freedom and liberty are, with very few exceptions, rather alien to them, even in the current day and age. This could be shown in detail. I don't want to go into details, don't worry. This could be shown in detail by looking at the so-called social doctrine of the Russian Orthodox Church from the year 2000. This document rejects the concept of human rights anterior to the state, as well as, as the idea that other religious communities in Russia should be granted the same legal protection as the Orthodox Church. That's an important topic for your work because you're working on religious freedom a lot in this center, I know. Neither the principle of free citizens nor the idea of a relatively autonomous civil society can based on this type of theology. Any criticism, for example, of Russia's relatively weak civil society cannot avoid taking into account the Russian Orthodox Church and its, in my view, very authoritarian theology. The Orthodox State Church plays an important role in the authoritarian reshaping of the political system. Within Latin Western Christianity, however, we have been confronted with a deeply influential division between Roman Catholic Christianity and the different Protestant Christianities. Lutheran Scandinavia on the one hand, a Catholic Latin Europe, as the sociologists of religion like to say, Jose das 
likes this notion of the Latin Christianities or Latin Europe in Italy, France, Spain, and Portugal, and the other. Seen in sociological terms, Europe is affected by an extremely high degree of diversity. And I haven't even begun to speak of Jewish, Muslim, and other minorities. Neither have I mentioned aggressive atheism, which of course also exists and plays quite an important role in some European societies, especially in Great Britain, the Netherlands, and so on. We must pay attention to the deep divisions in philosophy, religion, and politics that could be observed in many European societies since the enlightenment of the late 17th and 18th centuries. Let me cite France as an example for the fundamental division of public opinion between critics of religion and the churches and, uh, and the churches. In France, state and church are radically separated and the row over the two, or rather both Frances, is fought out again and again. This time concerning the question to what extent the state, in spite of all professed laicity, can or should help the Catholic Church and other religious actors gain more presence in public perception.